Hi, my name is Janice Connell, and this is Lab 3 for my Intro to Physics at Georgia Tech. In the Lab 3, we were asked to analyze a, the data of a star as it orbits a black hole. We were to analyze the motion to find the net force and then estimate the mass of the black hole. The starting observations are here. So we have the mass of the star. The, how many seconds in a day or each observation time increment, and the um, vector of the black hole position. From this information, I calculated the black hole mass of 4.59e to the 31st. Now I will walk you through how I did that. Um, because we have the observed motion data, we can calculate the change in momentum over each time step for both the x and y components. And Newton's second law of motion says that the change in momentum over time is equal to the net force, the net of all forces acting on the system. In this case, we are assuming only gravity is acting on the system. So the net force is equal to the change in momentum over the change of time. Further, F net can be broken down into parallel and perpendicular components. The parallel component indicates the change in speed, and the perpendicular component indicates the change in direction. We can calculate the parallel component of F net by taking the unit vector of the initial momentum vector times the magnitude of the change in momentum. And you can see here I did this in um, Python and that will tell us the change in speed. Um, and since we know F net and F net parallel, we can simply calculate F net perpendicular by simple subtraction. Since we know F net, the locations of the star and the black hole and the distance between them, we can use Newton's law of universal gravity to find the mass of the black hole. So Newton's gravitational force says that the force of gravity on 2 by 1 equals minus g, the mass of 1, the mass of 2, the product of those masses divided by um, the magnitude squared, or the distance between them squared, times the unit vector. And since we know everything except for mass of 2, we can rearrange that formula to look like this. And you can see that I calculated that in my Python data. And I will show you my Python, what it looked like when it ran. Um, I had a hard time getting the arrows to work properly. Every time I changed the arrow scale on the arrows, the, the green line, which represents the movement of the star, would go off the, it would go up off the, um, off the window. So I had to settle for that. And here's my data, and I put that data in Excel uh, here, so you can see all of my data. I've got the F net magnitude, F net parallel, uh, F net perpendicular magnitude, and the black hole mass. So Newton's second law of momentum tells us that the change in momentum over the change in time is equal to the net force, but they are not the same. Um, the change in p momentum over the change in time is the ob observed data, um, and it equals F net, but the force is what causes the change in momentum, whereas uh, the change in momentum over the change in time is the observed, uh, observed effect. We were also asked to imagine the black hole um, mass was replaced with another black hole. Um, if the motion of the star remains unchanged, then the mass of the new black hole is exactly the same. Uh, and we know this because any change in the uh, momentum would be affected, or a change in mass would impact the change in momentum and the star's path would change. So if we assume that the only force working on this system on star is gravity, if it remains in the same observed path, then that must mean the mass of the new black hole is exactly the same. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I look forward to your comments. Thank you.